Hello all. So guys, we are into the next tutorial of MongoDB and uh, till now you had actually seen in all my previous MongoDB tutorials, we had actually focused on installing the MongoDB in our local and then we were trying to do some different different kind of operations. But what if I hope you have heard of something called as database as a service. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about MongoDB Atlas. Okay, so this basically means this MongoDB will basically be in some kind of cloud, you know, it will be hosted in some kind of cloud and we will try to use those MongoDB services. Uh, in short, those databases will be hosted in the cloud itself. And if I talk about just cloud guys, in one of my videos in deployment playlist, I've talked, I've spoken about infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and you can also create a server in within your premises. Similarly, databases can also be created in within your premises. But what is the problem of that? You have to manage those databases. You have to, you know, hire many people to manage the scalability factor, continuously monitoring factor and all. But what if, right, in the recent days, we have Azure, AWS, Google Cloud. They are so big cloud platforms, right? And in those cloud platforms, we can directly use this MongoDB services, which is also called as database as a service. And that particular service name can be actually accessed with the help of MongoDB Atlas. Yes, uh, there is again a free version of this so that it will be very, very helpful for you all to practice. But yes, when you're working in companies, uh, they will be taking some paid version of this MongoDB Atlas itself. So let's go ahead and try to understand how exactly this database as a service works. And then we'll also try to create this uh, a new account in MongoDB Atlas and we'll try to execute some uh, code with the help of Python and see how the data is basically getting inserted. And in this MongoDB Atlas, you'll be able to see that we will be able to create cluster of databases. Like cluster basically means we may have three clusters of databases, right? So uh, all these three clusters will be having the replica of all the data and based on the traffic, right? That request may be going to some specific database uh, based on the traffic level so that we will be able to get the result queries uh, as soon as possible. So let's go ahead. So initially before, if you just go some years back, you know, so uh, we have, we uh, like many companies also used to use or uh, have the database within the premises, right? And when they used to have that, they need, needed to hire many resources so that they have to manage all those databases and all. But now uh, database as a service, what we do is that suppose this is my MongoDB. I will try to uh, host this in one of these cloud platforms like Azure, AWS and Google Cloud Platform. And uh, MongoDB Atlas has that functionalities. You know, you can use it in AWS, Azure or Google Cloud Platform. So this recently be, has been used by all the companies. Even my current company, my previous company, all the companies are going ahead with the database as a service because they did not form a team to handle the databases separately. It will be handled by those cloud platform. Now, what type of handling I'm talking about? I'm talking about scalability. I'm talking about handling the database, uh, all the configuration and many more things. It's all that we'll try to, uh, you know, create this database in the cloud itself. We'll get a connection string and then we'll try to access those connection string within our local so that we'll be able to insert our data. Now, this was with respect to database as a service. So I've just written a small description over here. Databases are at the core of most of the business apps and cloud-based DBAAS, which is nothing but database as a services, offers uh, this DBAS uh, services offers users a flexible, scalable, on-demand platform that eliminates the need to set up costly physical hardware install software configure for performance. Now, suppose if you are creating a database within your premises, you have to actually create the hardware, right? You have to uh, set up that costly hardware, install all the softwares, configure it time to time, you know, update it and do many more things. But if we are actually using database as a service which is actually hosted in some cloud, all these things will be actually eliminated. Now, uh, for that, we have MongoDB Cat, uh, Atlas, and this is a NoSQL database. Uh, MongoDB Atlas is the global cloud database service for modern application deploy fully manage MongoDB across AWS, Azure, or GCP, right? So they have actually taken the best cloud platform, best in class automation and proven practice guarantees, availability, scalability, and compliance with the most demanding data security and piracy, privacy. So basically data security is also being handled because this all uh, database is being hosted in the cloud cloud like AWS, Azure and GCP, right? And they are handling the security part and the privacy part also, right? 
they also provide the dual benefit of flexibility and scalability the dynamic schemes allows users to change the schema of their data without modifying it so this is some basic advantages and uh, not only mongodb guys you can also use mysql uh, database as a service and you can deploy in those uh, clouds itself now why mongodb atlas uh, you can see all these things you'll be able to see in the documentation page also secure or sensitive data are designed for de developer productivity reliable for mission critical workloads built for optimal performance managed for operational efficiency okay uh and some of the example of infrastructure as a service are that like this clouds like microsoft azure aws and google cloud platform they act as an infrastructure as a service that basically means they will be providing you the environment like linux platform with what kind of hardware that you want you'll be using those infrastructure then you'll install all the packages suppose if i'm developing a python application then i'll try to uh, configure all the packages that is required or libraries that is required and i can start executing my web application over there right a uh, platform as a service is uh, one example is heroku there you don't have to do anything the platform will also be taken care of uh, and along with the libraries installation everything will be taken care of by this uh, platform itself right in most of the time when we do the deployment heroku we just provide one requirement.txt right automatically it will go and allocate a machine for us it will do the installation for us and do most other things with respect to it right so this is an example of platform as a service now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to show you how we should go ahead and set up our Ma uh, mongodb atlas and then uh, we'll try to see all these things uh, in front of us right so let's go ahead and try to do this so let me go back over here so first of all guys this is the documentation page uh, any time whatever problem you face just go and see in the document page itself now what i'm going to do is that i'm basically going to uh, write mongodb atlas so first of all uh, try to log in into the mongodb atlas guys so uh, so inside this you'll be able to see there will be a sign in option so i'm going to sign in i'm going to log in with my google account so i'll take this google account fine okay so i'm going to take this google account and uh, i will be acknowledging it uh, and submitting it okay so if this is the first step you have to basically log in with a google account so that everything will be managed over there so now this is the page that you can see that your registration has been successful and you will be getting this first page right and inside this you'll be saying that you'll be having shared cluster dedicated cluster dedicated multi-region clusters and again when you are in the company you will probably be using this one dedicated multi-region clusters uh, so that your database can be accessed uh, throughout worldwide and it should be pretty much fast but as usual uh, the free version will try to use this so that at least we get some hands-on experience so i'm going to create over click over here create a starter cluster uh, i'll be selecting this aws by default non-virginia because these all are free uh, remember in this cluster tire don't select anything other than this mo sandbox and only one you will be able to get and this is completely free forever here you'll be able to store around 5 to mb okay shared database and here you can see that how many number of connections and all these things are there this is just for practice so we will be using this so uh i'll be selecting this apart from this if you really want to give any cluster name you can give like uh, i will say my db okay and then the next step is basically to create the cluster so once i do the creating cluster you'll be seeing that this will take some time uh it'll probably take around two to three minutes and you'll remember guys this is a cluster it's a cluster of databases that is being created in the cloud okay so this may take around one to three minutes but uh, i really don't want to wait for that much time so what i'm going to do is that i had already created one cluster in my other account so what i'm going to do over here is that i'm just going to log out uh quickly okay and again i'm going to log in with my another account so that i'll be able to see that cluster okay just to make it simple and easy okay so once my login is done so here is this uh, this is the cluster that i had actually created okay now uh, probably in that account also after three minutes three minutes you'll be able to see this kind of cluster over here now one thing is that how do you connect to this cluster that also is a pretty much important thing so what i'm going to do is that i'm just going to connect over here click on the connect button and you have all this particular connection method now first of all uh, i'll try to this is my mongodb compass i hope you know about mongodb compass in my previous tutorial i've explained you about that so in through this mongodb compass i'm going to connect through this mongodb atlas how to connect it so over here you have option connect with mongo cell connect with the application connect using mongodb compass 
So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to connect uh, using MongoDB. Um, you see that I have a MongoDB compass. I have to click over here. So I will just be using this whole thing. Okay. This will be the thing that I will be using. Okay. And I'll just copy this. Okay. Uh, and uh, remember guys, uh, this password setting, you know, after you connect, right? As soon as you connect over here, the first option, it will tell you to set up a password along with your DB username. Okay. So that is not being visible over here because I've already created this cluster, but here you'll be able to see that I will copy this. This will be copied over here. Okay. I'll, I'll be showing how you can set up the password again. I'll change my account. Don't worry. So here you can see that I'm, I'm going to select this. Okay. And uh, I'll copy this. Okay. I have a MongoDB compass. Fine. I will, I will copy this. After copying it, guys, what I'll do is that I will go to my MongoDB compass. Okay. So here is my MongoDB compass. I will say, I will say new connection. I will paste it over here and you can see over here, instead of password, I am going to just prompt or write my password over here, like one, two, three, four, five. I'll tell you how to set up this password guys. By default, I have given my username as my DB user over here and the password is one, two, three, four, five. So once I connect it, you'll be able to see that my MongoDB will get connected. Now here it is. You can see that it is got connected. Here, uh, this is basically a replica set of three nodes, three clusters, basically uh, in, inside a cluster, there are three nodes over there. These are the host ID of those my clusters, basically, right? Now this is, I have actually connected to the database, okay? Now, similarly, what you have to do is that if you really want to access this DB connection from your local, then what you have to do, again, you copy this. I have, in my previous session of MongoDB, I had actually explained to you about aggregate and group functions. Now inside that initially you'll be creating a Mongo client, right? Just copy this Mongo client address over here. Okay. Same thing. You copy it over here and again, change your password to one, two, three, four, five. And before doing that guys, you have to install one more important library. Okay. Please make sure that you know this, the library name is something called as pip install. So here you can see pip install pi Mongo with brackets SRV. Okay. Otherwise you'll get an error. Okay. You have to install this, uh, just install it by writing pip install pi mongo SRV and just enter it. So here you'll be able to see that my requirement is already satisfied because I have already installed it. Now it's the time to execute and see whether it is getting executed or not. Now in this, uh, whole thing, what I'm doing is that I have created a mongo client with this, uh, connection string, this connection string, I've got it from my clusters. Okay. Clusters over here. What I'm going to do over here is that when I create this cluster, I'm just going to paste that connection string over here. Okay. And make sure that you change this password. Okay. Because if I just paste it, you'll be able to see that there will be something like this. Oops. Sorry. I'll copy this. Okay. And I'll remove this and you here you'll be able to see that there is something called as password. Now instead of this password, I'll write my password that I will set. I have set and I'll show you how to set up the password. Okay. The database is sorry. The cluster is getting created in my another account. So I'll show you from scratch. Then what you do is that you, you see over here what I'm doing. First of all, I've created a connection string of Mongo client. Then I'm calling, I'm creating a database, which is called as students. And then uh, I've created a collection, which is called as student scores. And then I'm, I'm, I'm inserting all these particular records and I've shown these all things in my previous video, right? So I think it should not be a confusion. If there is a confusion, just watch my previous video in the MongoDB playlist itself. So I will execute this. So once I execute this, we'll see that whether the execution will happen perfectly or not. So here you can see that MongoDB results insert any re uh, result at this specific memory location. Now, again, I'll go to my MongoDB compass to see whether that database is created or not. And remember this database has actually been connected to this Atlas MongoDB compass, right? Oh, sorry, Atlas MongoDB. So I'll go over here, just reload it. And here you'll be able to see that student uh, database is created, student scores collection is created, and these are all the records that is actually available. Okay. Now, similarly, what I'll do is that now probably I think, uh, let me just log out from here and see whether uh, that whole thing is got created or not. So I'm just going to log out. So here uh, I'll log in with my Google account. Again, I had created my another Google account to create it from scratch. I'll go over here. And when I go over there, you'll be able to see that that whole MongoDB, uh, the cluster may have got created. Now you can see that my DB has got created, right? Now I'll go and click on connect. The first thing it will tell me that put a password. So here you can see that my password shows one, two, three, four, five. So username shows this, right? 
So I can use this my DB user one two three four five. Okay, you can set it your own. Okay, suppose you want to set my DB user one two, and your password is one two three four five. So let me just make it this one simple. And before this, you also have to do this, guys. This is also an important step. Whitelist a connection IP address. Now, since you want to use it from a local environment, you have to add your current IP address. So this is my current IP address. I'm adding it. So I'm saying that this is my local machine, right? Similarly, you can add any number of IP address from where uh, you are trying to access the MongoDB, and it usually be is the it is usually the uh, machine, or you can say the environment in your server. The which environment? Suppose you are doing the deployment in EC2 instance. That Linux uh, environment, you will basically take the IP and you will put it over here. Okay. So I'm going to add the IP address. I'm going to save it. I'm going to create the database user my DB user one two three, and I'm going to choose a connection method, and then I'm going to connect it using MongoDB. Now you can see that this is basically my MongoDB connection string. So what I'll do is that I'll go again back over here. Let me just disconnect. With the databases, and let me create a new connection. I'll paste it over here, and here I just have to remove this password. So one two three four five. You can see my DB user one two is there, right? So I'll connect it. Once I connect it, you'll be able to see that this is a new connection altogether, guys. New connection altogether, right? Here you will not find that student database. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is that that same DB connection I'm going to put it over here also. Okay. Same DB connection. I'm going to put it over here, and here I'm going to replace it by one, two, three, four, five. Right. Once this is done, I will just try to execute this. Once I execute this, the probably the insertion should happen now. So yes, the insertion has happened. Here you will be able to see it. Just reload it. Uh, here you'll be able to see the students and student scores, and here are all the data. Now this is actually happening in the cluster of cloud uh, cluster of databases, right? So this is one cluster. You have replica set of three nodes. Any number of nodes you can actually have. Again, this is just the free version. You can check it over here. Now just try all the operations that you want. Suppose you want to do an aggregation, you can do everything from that. So let me just show you. So I've executed this. I've executed it. So this all data is basically coming from the MongoDB Atlas. So I hope you got the overall idea how to do and how to work with any problems that you have. Just follow this documentation. Again, the first step is basically to create your Atlas account, log in with your Google ID, create the cluster, right? Set the DB user name and password, and then you go and actually find out the connection string, use that password over there, and just log in inside this. Try to use it from MongoDB Compass so that you'll be able to see the records whatever access is going. And remember, guys, this whole material is basically given in the GitHub. The GitHub link will also be given in the description. Only the thing that you have to change is this one. Okay, just change this. Okay, so change this. So yes, this was all from my side. I'll see you all in the next video. I hope you like it. Please do subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all. Bye bye.